Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Lisa and in this video you'll see how I've completed this Sheltie from start to finish. This commission is an image I purchased from Adobe Stock Images and anyone who purchases an original artwork from my Etsy shop or has a commission completed gets given a little thank you gift of greeting cards and some gift tags. You can see all of my original artwork, gift tags and cards on Etsy and see all of my recent artwork on Instagram. In the description below I'll put a list of the paper and pencils that I've used but they are Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils and Fabriano Artistico Hot Pressed watercolour paper. So let's get started drawing the Sheltie. So generally for a piece like this I'll always start with the eye, it just gives you a really good starting point and gives the piece a little bit of character. So I started by going around with the dark sepia very lightly around the outline, then you sort of step back and have a look and if you're happy with the outline then you can go in a little bit darker and darken it up. Then I used the Holbein soft white pencil to put in a wax resist where the very bright highlights are in the eye. And then I go in with the lighter colours of the warm grey one, the raw umber and then work up to the darker colours like the nougat, burnt sienna and walnut brown. Finally I went in with some dark sepia to darken it all up. And then the very, very darkest bits, I went in with a little bit of black, but I usually don't use too much black in my pieces because they can look flat if you just go too far. After adding in the eye, I sort of used my kneaded eraser to gently take away some of the graphite around the eye and then put in a base of the warm grey one and start to work in the fur strokes. So remember to pay attention to your reference photo, which way the fur is going so that you're making sure you're going in the right direction, especially around the eye the fur tends to go in different directions so it's really important to make sure that you're mimicking the right area. So to make this process a little bit easier I usually just focus on areas and clumps of fur and work on them together and then work on connecting them all up and putting them all together. When it comes to this sort of thing if you think of it as a whole it can be very overwhelming so it's really good to break it down and work on little sections at a time. For the brown clumps of fur I was using the ivory and warm grey one as a base and then going in with the light yellow ochre, the raw umber, burnt ochre, burnt sienna and going up to the walnut brown if there was darker areas and also some of the dark sepia in there as well. For a little bit of a highlight and shadow I was also using the manganese violet. For the grey and black fur on the dog I was using a warm grey one, warm grey three, warm grey four, Payne's grey, dark sepia and also putting in all those other colours that you can see. So a little bit of the burnt ochre, a little bit of the walnut brown and also manganese violet to give it a little bit of shadow and colour. And also in the ear there was a little bit of beige red and pinky colours. And then also using some Caput Mortem Violet which is sort of a brown violet colour in and around the ear. So all of this fur on the back of the head, the neck and coming down from the ear was very tricky to do but like I said before just focusing on clumps of hair so you can see I pick out sort of different sections, go in with my Holbein soft white pencil to put down a little bit of a wax resist also using my embossing tool to put in hairs that need to be really white so you can tell them apart. Starting off with the warm grey one as a base and then going in with the warm grey three, warm grey four, working up using the Payne's grey where there's like sort of bluer areas and also the dark sepia. I also went in with a little bit of the sky blue in the whiter areas because that really brings out the bright white colour. And then I also went in at the end with my slice tool and picked up some of the darker areas to make little wispy white hairs to make him look a little bit more shaggy. So I thought I would show you in real time just this small section of fur to see the fur technique and how I'm putting all the fur down. So making sure to pay attention to your reference photo. You want to be putting your fur strokes in the direction of the fur and also the same length that you can see on the animal. So I don't want to go in with a really, really long piece of fur here or really short. It's sort of um, small to medium sizes. And you can see that I'm putting the fur strokes in the direction of the fur, like going down the face. 
and also going back up against the face. So going down will give you the impression that there are fur hairs going down, but then putting them in the opposite direction of the fur will give the impression that the lighter furs are overlapping the darker areas and you can get shadows underneath your fur. Also, when you're doing your fur strokes, make sure to start off soft on your paper, but firm, and then flick it off up to the right and, or down to the left and sort of taper the line out. So you don't want it to be the same thickness the whole time. You want it to sort of taper out. And as you can see, I'm sort of using a fast hand to put some of these down. This will make them sort of a little bit more sporadic and less uniform, which is what fur looks like in real life. So at the start of the muzzle and the side of the face, I would have gone in with a ivory base or the warm gray one or a mixture of both and then started with the burnt ochre and the raw umbar to put in this sort of fawn fur. And you can also go in with your ivory or warm gray one and start to put in the fur strokes because that will give you more depth and more definition in there as well. So then you go over with sort of a light base of the burnt ochre, terracotta, and then start going over again with darker strokes and putting in more fur where there's darker areas. Also, when you're putting your fur strokes down, if you want a really saturated color, you'll do your fur strokes close together. But you can see here on the muzzle, I sort of want there to be gaps in between. So I'm doing sort of big spaces in between the fur lines. Like I'm not grouping them so close together. I'm giving them a bit of a gap, which allows you to have some space in between them and doesn't make it a solid color because we're trying to mimic fur and sort of white flecks in between the fur, not just a solid color. So this is something that does take a lot of practice and it is really hard to get right. So don't be fooled by artists who, you know, sort of do these things so quickly. It does take a very long time and it is very um, time consuming and it's just building up your colors from light to dark and putting in all the shadows. So when it came to the nose for this one, I actually forgot to push record. I think that I did, but clearly it's not on my card so if you would like to see a nose in real time you can check out my staffy drawing um, and yeah that's real time from start to finish it goes for about half an hour and you can see it's all the same sort of processes I did use pretty much all the same colors but this one's a little bit grayer than the staffy and I didn't use as much blue in this one so for the mouth I did use an embossing tool to get those really white hairs on the lips and underneath the chin you can see as well and also around the nose I used an embossing tool around there to make sure that I kept the lines really nice and white. Moving on to the chest I also made sure that I started to elongate my fur strokes to make sure they're nice and long to give that sort of luscious long fur effect on the chest. And finally, one of the trickiest bits I always feel like is to do the whiskers. So making sure just to really pay attention to the reference photo, go in with the sharpest pencil that you have um, of the dark sepia or a black, or you can even in the lighter furs go in with like a warm gray four where it's a bit lighter or a warm gray one for those really little wispy white hairs. Then I usually leave it overnight or for a couple of days, come back, assess all the values, making sure you're getting all of the shadows in there, the lighter areas, the darker areas, and that was what will make it look very realistic. So I hope that you've liked this video. Remember to give me a like and subscribe for more tutorials to come in the future. If you work on an animal like this, please let me know in the comments below or if any of these tips have helped, let me know. Also add me on Instagram and tag me in anything you do because I would love to see what you're working on. Remember to check me out on Etsy. This is the final result. I'll see you in the next video and keep drawing guys. Thanks, bye. I'm put up with changes. Come pick me up cause I just wanna see the light I wanna be weightless Teach me to fly, I won't be coming down Could somebody wake me up? I don't wanna be here and let the world pass me by yeah. I just see her face where Ever I look, she's standing in the crowd
I'm so sick of waiting 